Oh, Valentine's Day, the day of romantic joy and sorrow. Some people wait for it to prove their love to their partner, while others scoff at the notion. But it does remind us that we all search for the feeling of butterflies in our stomach at some point of our lives. And what is the easiest place to find love, you ask? Well, that's my dear, is a dating sim. Today I present to all of you a very Ravenloft dating sim. According to Wikipedia, dating sims or romance simulation games are a video game subgenre of simulation games with romantic elements. Dating sims often revolve around entirely relationship building, usually featuring complex character interactions and branching dialogue trees, and often presenting the player's possible responses word for word. For our purposes, I should also add that all the love interests in such games are usually divided into distinct categories. This allows me to choose 10 men and women who fit nicely in such characteristics, so each of us can choose the right route for ourselves. So without further stalling, let's present our first pair of contenders. The arrogant and cocky types. This type is usually set as the main route for the most dating games. They are purposely rude to the main character in the beginning and just genuinely annoyed at their presence. The way this type falls for the player character usually has something to do with them being strong enough to take them seriously as a person and not letting the snarky remarks get to them. This arrogant times will eventually show they care by admitting that our poor old main character is not really useless. There will always be teasing in this sort of relationship, so you better be prepared. Representing ladies in this category is S, an accomplished researcher of the domains of dread and personal assistant to Oslin Rex himself. Graduate of both Dement Lu's schools and Darkon's Institute of Second Look before its downfall, she has built herself quite a portfolio. Because of this, she expects her partners to be as strong-willed as her, but maybe possessing some lightheartedness that she lacks. Gondigal is sometimes referred to as the Lost King, and I think that tells you everything you need to know. A minor noble from the distant Cormir, his youth was spent in attempts to make a hero of himself. Unfortunately, he only succeeded in Ravenloft, when he became the leader of the rebels in Falconia. If anyone manages to win this knight's heart over, I hope he never has to choose between his duty and his love. Now let's talk about smart and serious types. These individuals are strong-willed know-it-alls, who are usually big old teddy bears underneath. They're indifferent to the main character in the beginning, giving them the cold shoulder when attempts to interact with them, and only giving curt answers when spoken to. They observe and analyze the main character and are very confused when they insist on talking to them all the time. When they finally warm up, they get embarrassed. Fast. Get ready for the blushing everywhere, because everything you make for them will be the best thing anyone has ever done to them. Alani Gray is a self-proclaimed but well-deserved great detective of Ravenloft. He is always prepared and seemingly remembers all the details of his cases, however unimportant. He possesses a sharp intelligence and believes justice to be his main goal in life. He is also fiercely loyal to friends and lovers and deeply thoughtful when he needs to be. I know, I know, I am cheating by choosing two people. But hey, both Weathermay Foxworth twins fit this category perfectly. Aflin scholars and striking beauties, Jennifer and Laurie are following in Dr. Van Richten's footsteps. They work as a team on taking down small-time supernatural threats, and according to both of them, they have no time to date anyone. But we all know that an intelligent and courteous person can swoop them off their feet. Now, let us discuss the flirty and determined types. They're the type to instantly begin flirting with the main character the moment they see them, but it's most likely out of habit. With their flirtatious words, these individuals try to smoothly win the main character over, just like they've done with countless others before them. If the character doesn't respond desirably, which is most likely happens, then they get confused. In the midst of their confusion, they will try even harder to win the partner over with their even more direct moves, and eventually, they'll genuinely fall for the main character. Get ready for some really direct and suggestive comments from these types, even long after you've gotten together. A first contender from the Curse of Strad module is Esmeralda de Avenir, a former student of Dr. Rudolf von Rechten, now became the master monster hunter herself. Many adventurers will most likely encounter her in the castle Ravenloft, where she can become a great ally against Strad. Unlike her loner mentor, she never gave up on the company of others and took playful banter to the extreme. Joseph's moon-tied soft voice and blue eyes has wooed a fair share of people of all the races and he seems to prefer to keep it casual. He's a talented sailor and a druid who is in love with the sea and I cannot imagine his partner not sharing his fascination. But I must warn you, under such an outgoing attitude hides a soft and vulnerable heart, so be prepared to all manner of romantic gestures that only start innocently. 
Okay folks, now we're getting to the category of the most comfortable relationships. These individuals are usually older than the main character, they are a rock of dependability, whether it's with wisdom or finances, and are kind to the people around them. They are very hyper and tend to watch from afar with a smile on their face, happy to see others enjoy themselves. When the main character comes around, these types don't think of them as a potential love interest simply because of an age difference. But after some time goes by and after they have shared many conversations and experiences, they will develop other feelings for them. Once dating, expect them to care of you in any way they can and to protect you with whatever they have. George Weatherway is a devoted monster hunter and a defender of the innocent. His once soft heart was burned by an axe lover who turned out to be a werewolf using him. Now he sees life in black and white and doesn't believe in his own salvation. He's a bit of a loner, yes, but when someone manages to befriend him, he becomes a great friend, a potentially a gentle partner. Aya Pax is a paladin of the Morning Lord. She stands as a beacon of virtue in the midst of all the darkness and depravity of the domains of dread. Always her own harshest critic, she strives to snatch as many people from the jaws of death as she can. She has worked with adventurers before and has always been drawn to those who could make her smile. And now, for the main reason you are all here, the silent and mysterious types. These characters love to be quiet. The most you'll ever hear from them near the beginning of your friendship is a few sentences, and that is if you're lucky, and never a full-on conversation. They're usually silent amongst the other people around them as well, giving them that mysterious image. However, with a good amount of time, these individuals will reveal themselves to actually be kind-hearted and caring. They just don't know how to show it. The reason anyone under this category falls for the main character is because they try to find out more about the silent types by just being around them. The main character becomes someone that they begin to get used to and naturally open up. Once they open up, you are in for some cute, blushful affection coming your way. Louise Reynier is a twin sister of Jacqueline Reynier, of whom she is insanely jealous. The root of their difficult situation seems to be the fact that Louise wants to be recognized for her own achievements and strike on her own, while Jacqueline doesn't want her sister to ever leave her side. If this family drama doesn't scare you and you spend some time winning Louise over, she will be happy and willing to leave her family and past behind. It is only appropriate that we finish our showcase of dateable NPCs with the one from Curse of Strahd module, namely Viktor Volakovich. Raised in a family who is afraid of all magic in general and necromancy in particular, it is not surprising that Victor keeps his hobbies to himself. Despite his shy nature, he is extremely intelligent and will warm up quickly to anyone who shares his interests. Just make sure to erase his teleportation circle. I hope that my handy guide to the types of lovers in Ravenloft was helpful to all of you. But remember, real life is given freely and never cursed under pressure. And as always, thank you so much, patient listeners. Tell me in the comments who caught your eye, and be careful while crossing the mist to try and make it work.